25 days after he buried his father and 15 before the 2006 U.S. Open, Tiger went back to visit the Navy SEALs, this time to a hidden mountain training facility east of San Diego. The place is known as La Posta, and it's located on a barren stretch of winding road near the Mexican border. Everything is a shade of muted tan and green, like Afghanistan, with boulders the size of cars along the highway. This time, Tiger came to do more than watch. He tried the State Route 25 sniper rifle and the SEAL's pistol of choice, the Sig Sauer P226. One of the instructors was Petty Officer First Class John Brown, whose father also served as a Green Beret in Vietnam. Brown pulled Tiger aside. The sun was shining, a nice day, and the two men talked, standing on the northeast corner of a shooting facility. Why are you here? Brown remembers asking. My dad, Tiger said, explaining that Earl had told him he'd either end up being a golfer or a special operations soldier. My dad told me I had two paths to choose from. Brown says Tiger seemed to genuinely want to know about their way of life. Tiger asked questions about Brown's family and they figured out that Brown's wife and Tiger shared the same birthday. Tiger told him not to ever try to match Michael Jordan drink for drink. They talked about Earl, and Brown felt like Tiger wanted safe harbor from his grief, a way to purge some of it even, to prove something to himself, or maybe prove something to the spirit of Earl, whose special ops career never approached the daring of a SEAL team. I definitely think he was searching for something, Brown says. Most people have to live with their regrets. But he got to experience a taste of what might have been. The instructors gave Tiger camo pants and a brown t-shirt. He carried an M4 assault rifle and strapped a pistol to his right leg. On a strip of white tape above his right hip pocket, someone wrote Tiger, Seal Ben Marshall, his name has been changed for this story because he remains on active duty, took Tiger to the Kill House, the high-stress combat simulator where SEALs practice clearing rooms and rescuing hostages. Marshall is a veteran of many combat deployments and was with Tiger making sure he didn't get too hurt. The instructors ran the golfer through the house over and over, lighting him up with some munition, high-powered paint rounds that leave big, painful bruises. It was so much fun to hit him, Marshall says. He looked like a deer in the headlights. I was spraying him up like it was nothing. The instructors set up targets, some of terrorists holding weapons and others of innocent civilians. Under fire and stress, Tiger needed to decide who should die and who should live. During one trip through the kill house, the guys switched out of target of someone with a gun for one of a photographer, and when Tiger came through the door, he killed the person with the camera, according to two witnesses. The SEALs asked why he'd shot a civilian. First Tiger apologized for his mistake. Then he made a joke about hating photographers. Eventually, Woods learned how to clear a room, working corners and figuring out lanes of fire, doing something only a handful of civilians are ever allowed to do, run through mock gun battles with actual Navy SEALs. He can move through the house, says Ed Heiner, a retired SEAL who helped oversee training during the time and wrote a book called First, Fast, Fearless. He's not freaking out. You escalate it. You start shooting and then you start blowing s up. A lot of people freak out. It's too loud, it's too crazy. He did well, at one point, Marshall put him through a combat stress shooting course, making him carry a 30-pound ammunition box, do overhead presses with it, do push-ups and run up a hill, with shooting mixed in. Tiger struggled with slowing his heart rate down enough to hit the targets, but he attacked the course. He went all out, Marshall said. He just effing went all out. Marshall got his golf clubs at one point and asked Tiger to sign his tailor-made bag. Tiger refused, sheepishly, saying he couldn't sign a competing brand. So Marshall challenged him to a driving contest for the signature. Both Marshall and Brown confirmed what happened next. Tiger grinned and agreed. Some other guys gathered around a raised area overlooking the shooting range. Marshall went first and hit a solid drive, around 260 or 270 yards. Tiger looked at him and teed up a ball, gripping the tailor-made driver. Then he got down on his knees. He swung the club like a baseball bat and crushed one out past Marshall's drive. Tiger started laughing, and then all the SEALs started laughing, and eventually Marshall was laughing too. Well, I can just shoot you now and you can die, Marshall joked, or you can run into and die tired. Tiger juggled many women, including Rachel Yucatel, left, Corey Wrist, center, and Jamie Grubbs, right, looking for something he couldn't find. Eddie image SD military men in their bravado sent Tiger back in time to the Navy golf course with Earl and those salty retired soldiers and sailors. He missed his dad, of course, but he also missed the idea of Earl, which was as important as the man himself. Sometimes his dad traveled to tournaments and never visited the course, staying put at a hotel or rented house in case Tiger needed him. 
They could talk about anything, from the big questions of life, like Tiger's completely earnest belief in ghosts, to simple things a man should know, like how to order spacers of water between beers to keep from getting so drunk. That last bit came about after a bad night at a Stanford fraternity party, without Earl, Tiger felt adrift and lonely. He threw himself back into his circus of a life, moving from place to place. And in the months after the